Hi guys, Judy here. I'm driving home. Dentist appointment's over. They just had to clean up some things. They have to put some new crowns in next week or the week after, hopefully. We'll at least do the molds and then they come in. And anyway, um, so I, I've just been, I was really tired today. And um, it's no excuse, but somebody was asking me for prayer. And I got a word for them and I gave it to them and they still wanted prayer. And, <clears throat> and I was a little bit short with you, I'm sorry. I just said, well, just believe what you've been told. Believe what the Bible says and believe what I told you. And, and I might have been a little rude. I, I just felt like I was being impatient. I get like that because um, I just want people to believe, you know. And I get impatient with myself too. So please forgive me, whoever you were, because I went back to apologize. And then it looks like you erased your comment, and I might have hurt your feelings. So I'm really sorry if I did. <clears throat> you know, um, we're not perfect. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. I asked God to forgive me for being impatient. He did. I, I just, you know, we just have to believe, you guys. You have to believe. You have to believe. That's all that God requires is that we, he will do everything else for us because he's so wonderful like that. But all that it requires is that we believe. It's just a mustard seed faith and he'll build on it. Just give him a little and he'll build on it. But you do have to, you have to do your part. And I see a lot of people not doing their part and I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I'm not doing my part in believing when certain circumstances arise. You know, my son's braces cost $5,000 plus, and then his, then my computer's almost broken, and, and my son needs a laptop for school, and my phone's on the outs. I have to borrow my son's phone half the time, and I work really hard, and it's still not enough because this is the situation God has put me in, and, um, and, God says it's enough, so it must be. So I have to believe that with my mustard seed faith and not freak out and worry about things. And um, and so I do the same thing, okay? I, I, I do the same thing in certain areas. Some areas I'm really strong in my faith. Other areas, it's really hard to just get the mustard seed going. But but you can. It's an act of our will. And I just tell myself, I have a talk. I'm like, no, you will trust in the Lord your God. He is good. You know he's good. You've been walking with him for over 20 years. Knock it off. And and then the Lord comes and he assists me, you know. And and that's just how it works. So, um, incidentally, I have enough money from working to pay for my daily expenses. But nothing in our house, I can't afford anything to break. Nothing can break. Everything has to last, right? And so when these things around electronic items were starting to break and I just stressed out. And, um, and God actually met that need yesterday. Somebody offered to take care of that need for me. And I was just shocked and blown away. Um, so that was really cool. See, so God will, I mean, he's good. He, he knows what we need and if we need it. I was actually kind of excited because I was hoping that I wouldn't need it because when he met it, I'm like, oh, great. What are we going to need a computer for? Great. You know, but anyway, um, it's okay. If he wants to supply for another week before he comes, he will. And thank you the person, to the person who reached out to me and, and had a word for me that God wanted to to bless me. I mean, they didn't say get a, go get a laptop, but they just said, and I immediately what came to my mind was, I well, I need to replace this and and an iPhone 4S that's really old and never works half the time. <laughs> and um, I, the only thing that can excite me, you guys, is, is the rapture. I was, I was excited that God answered that prayer, but I'm not excited about the money. I'm not excited about anything. Nothing can excite me. I could win the lottery and I'd probably be happy for like a week at the most because I would be spending all my time probably just giving it away and that would be really fun. The best time of my life was after he fell on my son and I was giving money away. I was paying people's rents. I was giving money to people. I bought people lunch randomly. When I was went to the store to buy something, I would just buy something for the guy in front of me. I was having so much fun. It is so fun to bless people. 
And if I won the lottery, I would take care of all the debt I got into and take care of what I need to take care of. And then I would just give, give it away because it's fun. I live in the kingdom of God. And the only thing that really excites me is the Holy Spirit of my Jehovah God. If I'm getting my bliss bombs from God and he's pleased with me and I'm feeling his Holy Spirit power me, then I'm happy. But money doesn't make me happy. Relationships don't make me happy. My God makes me happy. I mean, sure, relationships are a blessing. I, I love the relationships that I have in my life. But they, they're not the origin of my happiness. Christ is the origin of my joy and of my peace and of my freedom. And um, I just went off on a tangent. But I'm really sorry if I hurt your feelings, person who was asking me to pray for you. I got impatient because you weren't displaying any kind of effort and I was giving you words and you were still like, please pray for me. It's like, I could pray for you till I'm blue in the face and unless you exercise your mustard seed, it's not going to do any difference. And that's kind of what I was trying to tell you, but I was in a rush and not feeling good today. And I, I really didn't mean to come across. I mean, my comment probably wasn't even that bad, but in my heart, I felt like I was being impatient. So I'm praying for you. I, I do. I pray for everyone that asks me to pray. And I love to. It's my honor, my great privilege to pray for you. Um, to whom much has been given, you know, uh, much more is required of me because I've been given much. So I, I give what I have and what I do have is what Christ has given me. And so I, I do have a lot of spiritual power. And so I use that power. I use it. I use it for the good. I don't use it to, you know, benefit me and prosper. I do it for you um, because that's the right thing to do. I see people that get God's power and they use it to, they use it and they abuse it. And, and, um, and that's not good. But I'm not doing that because if I do that, I'm not going to have what I have right now, which is the sweetness. I sleep well at night. I have a good, you know, I know, I know where I'm going and I'm not afraid and God is good to me. But, but anyway, so I am accountable though to, and now don't get me wrong. I can give words of correction and reproof and I will when God has me do that. Um, but I was simply tired today and I am tired. I feel like crap. And so there you have it, a day in the life of a rapture retard. Um, a powerful one. I, um, <laughs> my second husband, he was so funny. He, he likes women with power. And <clears throat> he was a medical engineer and just was really good at what he did. And um, he was attracted to women with power. And I was like, well, why did you marry me then? He goes, because you have so much power. I was like, what? I quit my job when I married you to be home with a kid. I have no power in, on it for anything. He goes, no, you have spiritual power. You, you have no peers. Your spiritual power is I've never met anyone with so much power. And I was like, what? I laughed so hard because I was like, yeah, but I'm just kind of used to it because I have that because I abide in God. Anyone can have it. Anyone can have it. Anyone can have it. It's not like I'm special, but it was really cute. And I, I was thinking of that today. For some reason, I just thought of that. I go, yeah, I'm powerful. It makes me feel good when I have, when I'm stripped of everything, you know, <laughs> I'm like, well, at least I have, at least I have mighty powerful God in me, you know, because he's really stripped me. You guys, he has kept me very humble. <clears throat> I borrow my sister's car. I mean, I, you don't know the way I live. <clears throat> because of what he did to my son and how he's called me to live, <clears throat> he keeps me very low and that's okay. Because if I have to keep so low to have what I have inside of me so that I can give it away to you and others, praise be to the Lord. Pray, keep me low and keep me lower because what I have in me is so powerful. You'll be afraid. And you know what? The devil's scared of us. He's scared of us. He's scared of us Christians that are really being intimate with God and following him and forsaking all for him and being obedient to the point of tears. You have a great reward. We have a great reward coming. Okay. We do. He loves us. 
just brings tears to my eyes because I, I just had a glimpse of my mansion again. Every now and then he shows me. It's a literal mansion, you guys. They're, literally, you're getting a mansion. I know some people think it's figurative language. My son saw it when God fell on him. He already told me mine was glass for being transparent on earth. I get a glass mansion because that's my reward. And that's really cool. And I'm telling you, I just cry when I think of... That's why I hate being here so much because it's... This is just poo-poo planet, man. It's poo-poo planet. It really is compared to what we have. But hang in there, bride, because you still have a great day. I am going to have a great day, okay? I feel like crap, but I got to take the boys to go do some things today. My son and his friend are going to voice lessons. They're, like, in a band, and then we're going to go out to eat. And, you know, I'm going to be the happy mom of teenagers, and I help them have a good time. I'm going to go hang out with the cats. I got to clean the house. And it's going to be a good day, but I just want to let you know what goes on on the inside. This is this is the rapture-centric life. You know what's up. You're, you know, we, we are a reflection of God. We are the joy of the Lord. We are amazing, and we let that light shine. See, it's the bipolar ride. I'm freaking totally depressed. I hate it here, and I'm totally full of joy, and I'm going to be the biggest light. Today I was a light at the dentist office, you know. It's it's it really is living in two different extremes. It's crazy. I've never lived like this. Since 2013, this has been my life. So I'm getting better at it. I I I can do this. I told the Lord, just whatever, take your time. I know you're hurting and I know he's not going to take his time. He's coming, but we can do this. It's not always easy, but we got this, guys. We got we got the greatest power living inside of us. We are powerful people. And I'm not going to be pathetic, and either are you. Show that mustard seed of faith, okay? Do your part. I'll pray for you. I'll lift you up. I, you will feel the strength coming when I pray for you. But you got to do your part. Just a little mustard seed of faith. That's all you got to do. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye.